Welcome back to another episode of the 12th man. It's the Merseyside derby, Everton versus Liverpool. Interesting starts to the campaign for both sides. Some defeats, uh, some interesting goings on in the transfer window. Panic buys at the last minute. Everton holding on to £70 million rated Anthony Gordon. Um, gents, uh, well, welcome to the Terrace. Welcome back to the show. Um, how are you both doing? I'm great, Terry. I'm great, Terry. First of all, thank you for having me. But yeah, just ready to get into this game. Of course, yeah, man. Same for me as well, Terry. Sorry to put in. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, getting our teeth into them. Come on, up the toffees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, got Mike here uh, on on the left of the screen, uh, repping uh, Everton and Roms, as you know, back in uh, back in Liverpool here today. Uh, sorry, Everton here today. Apologies for the slip of the tongue. Um, I want to start with Everton, really. I mean, it's not been a great start to the campaign. Lots of pressure on on Frank Lampard, you know, avoiding relegation last year. Um, what, do you, what do you make of your start? Is it as bad as the media is kind of making out? Or did you expect it to be a, a kind of slow start? Um, I don't think it was an easy start. I think from an Everton perspective, starting at home to Chelsea, um, a tough one. I, I, you know, they, they, they come into the season with a bit of... Uh, a bit of aggression. People were thinking they were going to do really well. Um, so we lose that game 1-0. Uh, a stupid penalty from Decore. So three points gone or a point gone or whatever. We then go to Villa. We could have probably got a draw, if not maybe at the end of the game. Even even nicked it, but we lost that game. And then we've had three draws on the bounce. Um, Nottingham Forest at home, disappointing result. There's no getting around that. You should be beating newly promoted Forest. And then we've gone to Leeds and Brentford and drew 1-1. But none of, none of the performances, I'd say, have been poor. I, I think they've all been OK. They've, they've, mm. they've been OK. Defensively, we look much more solid than last season. It's just been the issue about putting the ball in the back of the net. And when DCL is injured for three days before the start of the season, uh, it's an issue. Wasn't really addressed in the transfer window. So, um, from an Everton perspective, I'm not worried about anyone defensively. If they score, it'll be one. Worst two. Going forward, it's us scoring. And that's my worry in this game, if I'm being honest, Terry. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I, I just clocked that your last three results were 1-1. One, were one, one. What I would say with Everton is it's not like you've been getting battered. You know, it's been yeah. odd goals here or there. You're not conceding and hemorrhaging loads of goals. It, as you say, it's been more putting the ball uh, into... Uh, in, into the back of the net. And obviously, we'll get onto that in, in more of the preview later. See, Rom's here, obviously, back in Liverpool. Um, last minute panic buys. Uh, poor start to the season by your standards. What's, what's going on at Liverpool so far this season, mate? You know what? The the panic buy yesterday, I think as a fan base, it's got to the point because the bar's so low at the moment. We're just grateful. We're just grateful. And with Arthur Mello, right? Anyone's better than Henderson and Milner at the moment. So that's why I think we're grateful. And he does have a lot of quality that Juve and Barca don't buy you for no reason. Like they're two of the European giants. And when you do look at his qualities, he's got great ball on ball retention. He's quite pressure resistant as well. And it kind of goes against the grain of an industrial Klopp midfielder. As in, he doesn't really run around as much. He's not that kind of industry midfielder, but... He's more bored. He's similar, and don't say it for this, he's no way near Thiago, but he's kind of Thiago-esque, as in he's got a, he's got that splitting um, ball in behind. And I'm actually quite confident. And the thing is, Terry, it's a win-win because if it doesn't go well, we just send him back. If it goes well, there's an option to buy it then, I think, for 37.5 million euros. So I think in pounds, that rough, that's roughly about 30 million of British sterling. But... I'm not too upset, and I actually do feel he'll do well. In terms of our season, similar to Everton in a sense, bar the 9-0 Bournemouth win, we've just not been that potent. We haven't had that clinical edge. Things have kind of... it. The Darwin Nunes I'm um, sending off, it wasn't ideal. But again, I'd rather it happen at the start of the season, mid during the season at the end. So I know Klopp and Hendo would have sat him down. But we've just not been that, that clinical. And... We are missing injuries, but I still feel with the squad we've deployed in our previous five games, but we should still be have more points than we currently do have on the board. But I'm confident about tomorrow, and I do feel our season will kick on from now. Um, Nunes and Jot Nunes will be back um tomorrow. Jot has been in training. Hopefully, he makes the bench. 
Thiago should start training start of next week. So injuries are slowly coming back. Calvin Ramsey's also training as well. And Matip. So our season should kick on from now. Because two in two I'm um, two wins out of our last two. We're we're coming in good stead now. Coming in good stead. I, Mike, I want to ask you a question. Um Darwin Nunes, is that going to be a player that you target tomorrow to try and wind up, you know, stepping on his stepping on the Achilles, pinching the back of the legs because he looks like an absolute hothead? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got you've got Tarkovsky and, and Cody, who, let's be honest, in terms of experience, they're, they're very good seasoned Premier League professionals, aren't they? So they're going to be I, every time he goes up for a header, it's going to get a little nudge in the back. Every time he stands there for a corner, there's going to be a little stand on the toe. Michael. Just to interrupt, you know who would have been perfect, perfect for um, Nunes to play against? Yeri Mina. He's that type just to be in your ear all game, oh, yeah. just to annoy you. Yeri would have been perfect for this game. Sorry, I just thought... Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah so you're right. So, so you know, you've got wind-up merchants all over the team. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if Yeri Mina is literally just sitting, not on the bench, obviously, because he's injured, but sitting... In the Everton congregation, when they come on, uh, when they come onto the pitch, him shouting stuff, and they come on, it just wouldn't surprise me because Everton have got to get in. If Everton are going to get a good result in this game, we've got to get in his head. We've got to get in his head, you know. And there'll be, you know, I'm not all for bad tackles and stuff like that, but he does need to know that he's there. He's in a game. He's in his first Merseyside derby, and it's not going to be easy for him. We know the quality he possesses, so we've got to get in his head and shut him down early, in my opinion. So, yeah, Terry, absolutely, mate. In, in his ear, get on him, press him, be aggressive with him. Is Darwin... I, I want to ask this question to both of you, really. Darwin Nunes, we've seen how... what There was talk in the summer... Who is going to score the most goals, him or Erling Haaland, in terms of City and Liverpool fighting it out for a Premier League title? And I know it's not directly connected to the Merseyside derby, but is Darwin Nunes of the Erling Haaland level? And can he, Roms, kick you and score you to a Premier League title? I tell you that. I'm, I'm always going to back a play once they come in, but this Haaland versus... Nunes narrative and I would say that the media create but I understand that the two top teams in the country both bought a number nine both kind of in transition so it makes sense to compare them but Terry me and you both know is there any real comparison now I actually rate Nunes I know a lot of fans aren't on board but I do think he'll score I if I even had to make a prediction I think he'll get 15 to 20 league goals within his first season and some fans will be like no, that's not good enough. He's coming in. He's coming in to replace Mane. That you lot are, are near, there and thereabouts. He needs to kick on. But for his first season in this country, there's been a lot of foreign players that come in the first season and hit the ground running. But then there's been another pool that haven't. For me, I'd be okay with 15 to 20. But to kick us on to a title, I would say no. I think we're still going to be reliant on Salah in that aspect to, to get us most of the goals. And Diaz's output will also have to improve. So to answer your question, I've never really compared to Harlem. I think Harlem's just another level to him. However, I do think he'll score goals. And if I had to go all competitions, I think 25 plus. I think he'll be a success in his first season, honestly. Mm. I, I, I think a lot of people, the pressure is built up. Uh, the, the, part of it's the media. Part of it was a lot of people doubt Harlem for some weird. I think because Harlem started so well, not just in England, but his career, He's this, he's this early challenger for a lot of people's goats. And we already know that. So I think everyone wants yeah. Haaland to foul. You've got Arsenal fans, Tottenham fans, fans, any fan base who's got a goal scorer who is looked at as a as a goat, either in the Prem, in the in Europe, across football entirely, they're all worried about this kid. So anything to put him down, they're putting out there. In terms of um Everton, Mike, you managed to keep hold of Anthony Gordon from Chelsea. Um is that was that is that a good decision to turn down that level of money or could could that money have been used and reinvested to improve your squad further? Mate, who knows? I mean, it's it's bad, and it? it's bad. I'm like I'm sitting here like I, 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 the problem is Everton's recruitment over the last six years. Let, let's put it let's put it straight. We spent six hundred and something million pound in six years, and we're we're closer to relegation than we are winning the league. You know, the the team is the team is poor, so. Even if they'd have got that money, I don't necessarily trust that they'd recruit the right pay people with it, if you get what I mean. So yeah. I have no issues keeping Gordon. Now, if Chelsea were genuine and they went, yeah, you can have Brozier and Gallagher and £5 million, 
if we've genuinely turned that down, that is madness. Like it's madness because both of those players improve Everton, irrespective of Gordon. If you get what I mean, I like yeah. Gordon, I rate Gordon, I respect him. But all of a sudden, we're putting so much pressure on the 21, 22 year old shoulders because of how poor Everton are attacking wise. So honestly, I don't know. And and from from my perspective, Roms, are you concerned about Gordon in this game? If you don't mind me asking. Yes and no, because one thing I'll say Fulham and Palace did is they set a precedent for other teams. We're playing this high line, which has brought us so much success in the last three, four years, so I get that. But we're playing this high line and our midfield our midfield and our strikers aren't pressing as much as they have been. So what's happening is leaving a hole in the middle. I don't know if you saw the graphic, Terry, or um, the still image, Terry, where there was a point in the United game where we had no midfield in the middle. So against Pace this season, and I'll say Gray and Gordon are your biggest threats. McNeil, he's a quite technical footballer, but I wouldn't say he's lightning. Like, you know what I mean? I wouldn't say he's lightning quick. But if you go, if I'll go through the games. Bobby Reed and, and Cabano against us, for them terrorised Trent and, and um, Robbo, especially in the first half. Palace, Eze and, and Zaha did the same thing. United, Alanga, Rashford and Sancho did the exact same thing. Bournemouth, cool, 9 0. We we outplayed them in, in all aspects. And then even um our last game against oh, my man's gone blank now. Newcastle, Almron and Isaac on the counter. There is a precedent set that if you just have pace and the high line's not working that much this season, you can get us. So to answer your question, Michael, Gordon and Gray, I'm worried. They're the two I'm actually worried. And I know rival fans have this agenda I'll attack Trent, attack Trent. I'm sorry to say it is there. It is actually there. Like our right hand side is our weakest point. So to answer your question, I am actually worried of of Gordon and Gray. They're my, if we can nullify them, I think we win the game quite comfortably. But they're my two main main worries, concerns. You see, the reason I asked that, and 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 you are right, because I, I saw that graphic and I, I saw how Liverpool have, have pressed so much. So Everton's biggest uh, threat has been this season has been the centre-halves like Cody and Tarkowski playing these balls over the top. Exactly. So while, so while you're coming forward, Everton have used that pace to Mari Gray and Gordon to play the ball over the top. And the similarity, I am not saying this is going to happen, by the way. So any Liverpool fans in the comments, I'm not saying this is going to happen. Yeah. But the similarity is when you went to Villa Park, was it last season or the season before? And it was a bit yeah. of a kick in for Liverpool who were champions. Like the ball was just over the top. And because of the press... Liverpool really struggled. If you if you hem Everton in, yeah, we're going to struggle. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Liverpool have got quality players who score goals. Mo Salah loves the game against Everton. He loves, he loves it. He loves yeah. it. Right? So, I get it. But if Everton can control that and just relax a little bit, get that early ball out into our midfield and into the feet of Gordon and Tamari Gray, you do fancy them running that. Yeah. And, and another thing I'll say, and look, this isn't a whole Everton Liverpool thing, but Van Dyke has not been the same since the Pickford incident. Now, whether people thought it was a foul or did it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But the, the facts are he hasn't been the same. And this season, unfortunately for Liverpool, I think it's been seen a little bit more. There is no doubt you score goals. Absolutely no doubt. You scored nine against a Premier League outfit away from home, irrespective of anything, you score goals. But if we can somehow manage that, I fancy Everton's chances in this game to at least get a point. You know what, Michael? I'll slightly disagree with the um, Van Dijk game because normally it's the season after your ACL. I, my brothers did his ACL. I have people close to me that's done it. And normally you take a season to get going and then the season after you kick on. I actually think last season, Van Dijk was actually quite good. Matic was our, our better centre-back. But this this um idea from... Rival fans that Van Dijk wasn't good last season. He actually was. In my opinion, he actually was. Where I'm worried also as well, and I have to give so much credit to Lampard for this, the way he he's made Awobi into this eight, because Awobi always had the qualities to be an eight. And Anana, you signed from Lille, I think we will have most of the ball. I think by the end of the game, the possession stats will probably be 70-30, which hasn't done us any good this season because we've dominated most games we've been in. However, I think on the transition... If it breaks down, Anana and Awobi, they're very combative, by the way. And that's what our midfield struggling with at the moment. This is why we've been crying out for them, because 
we're not that pressing monster we were the last three, four years. The personnel kind of has to change. But I think if they can win the ball in the midfield and Gordon and Gray then make them them runs and you can deploy it to them, we could be in trouble. We could. So it, it'll be a very interesting game. It'll be a very interesting game. Mm. It, it, look, I, I listen, love listening to the breakdown from both of you and you kind of look at it and the higher line is there to be exploited. We know the, the difference between Liverpool and Everton is overall quality. Liverpool have that in abundance versus Everton and, and have done for the majority of the Premier League era. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. We know how they're going to break them down. Everton, you've got to put in a performance. I know you didn't win the game, but how you played against Man City uh, when Rodri gave the handball away, that game where you were hard to break down, you were dogged, you pressed at the right times, you sat deep at the right times. Everton have got to get that balance right tomorrow. If they do, the counter-attack's there because every team so far this season has exploited it. Now, if if it was Newcastle versus Liverpool on Wednesday at St. James's Park, I think Liverpool dropped points. Anfield's a different mm-hmm. animal because of the noise and the emotion. Being at Goodison Park, you you know as well as I do, Mike, that the noise is going to be raucous. You know, to get your first win of the season against Liverpool... It, Terry, it would... that's key. That's key as well. The fact they've not had a win yet, and what better club? To, if you have to pick a club, Matt, to get your first win of the season, of exactly. That and this, it's the little things like this that worry. Because Terry, you'll know as well. Derby's forget form, and not that both our teams been in great form, but forget form. Derby's all that goes out of the window. How Terry, even yourself, how many times have you gone into a city game of bad form and then you just turned them over? I you know, I, I, I agree. I, I agree. I mean, Liverpool are the favourites and we're not going to get yeah. away from that. But I think Liverpool, Everton are almost, it's a, I don't like this phrase too often, but in this case, I think it works true. It's a free hit. You're not, Everton yeah. are not expected to win irrespective of form. So play, with, you know, utilise that freedom. You know, Neil Mopay into the team, maybe starting tomorrow as an example. But Onana's look pretty good. And then, as you say, you've got the you've got Gordon, you've got Gray, you've got McNeil. I think these this space they're going to get on that counter attack to exploit that lack of midfield to exploit the the high line. I, I, I don't know if Arthur Mello will even be available yet. I know he, everyone signed yesterday, but it's a day in. He ain't playing ninety minutes anyway. Like yeah. after after making the move across, I'm really intrigued by this game, and it's so important for Liverpool to not from a you know we are at a top we're a biased top six uh, channel. That's what we focus on <laughs> predominantly. With the way Arsenal are winning games, the way City are winning games. Liverpool just can't off. I mean, if they didn't get that, 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 them two goals late on for Liverpool, stop them from being 10 and nine points respectively off the yeah. top. And if you yeah. end this weekend and you are nine to 10 points off the top, six games in, I don't think Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool can win the league. Everton's, yeah. Everton's motivation tomorrow has got to be first win of the season, put in our best performance of the season, get the, make the fans happy. But essentially you could stop Liverpool winning the title tomorrow because I don't believe a 10 point gap can be recovered even from this early stage because City are just too relentless. City are just not going to let up. They never do. They haven't done. Unless they have, a, unless they do something which they haven't done under Pep Guardiola and that's collapse and fall away in a season, the, the league title's done and dusted. So what What great motivation um, for you know, Everton. You know what, Terry, as well, the last time Everton had a great motivation to stop us doing anything, it was even in the 18-19 season. I remember we had... For me, we had four draws that killed us. There was a nil-nil draw at Goodison, a one-one draw at Old Trafford, Leicester and West Ham. And Everton know if we're onto as as your noisy neighbours, if we're onto big things, you love to be that team to stop it. So you've done it before, and you're going to try and do it again. Exactly, and and also as well, you know, it, it is that added element that Lampard's under a little bit of pressure. What better way for him to recover, Everton? In the in deadline day yesterday, they brought back an Everton player who who was part of a team that I think beat Liverpool, which is Ladrissa Garner Gay as well. Mm. So if Garner comes into that team, as you said, combative, even if he plays forty five minutes, even half an hour, you that got could two be the moment. Now, it? Yeah, oh mate, <laughs> Garner, Anana, and Garner. I mean, are you familiar <laughs> with that down midfield? So yeah. really, all of a sudden, I'm going defensively in midfield. Everton, for me, I feel fine about. It's just up front. If if we if we had Calvert Lewin going into this game, I'd sit here and say, Do you know what? I think we'll win, but we haven't. So I have to be honest and, and, and true what? to myself. The only way we win is by hitting you on the counter two times tomorrow because we have to score one goal more than you. Yeah. And I think you score. 
Your Calvert Lewin is like our Thiago. The fans yeah. love him. You know his quality, but they're just never available. Because I'll sit here and say, if we had Thiago, I think we're beating you comfortably tomorrow. Not just winning, I think we're winning comfortably. But they're both so frustrating in, in, in their own way. Do you know what I mean? But I agree with mm-hmm. what you said, Michael. Honestly, I do. But I think when it's all said and done, though, we leave good as with the three points. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I just want to mention, guys, obviously, it, it's a it's a big game in Liverpool in general because obviously two and a half weeks ago there was a nine-year-old girl that was the shot dead in her yeah. home, Olivia. And it will be nice tomorrow for the both clubs to get together and 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 show solidarity in that way. One thing that Everton and Liverpool have always done yeah, is their yeah. big brotherhood in adversity, and tomorrow will be a massive game um for Olivia a family and and everyone connected with the city. It'll be a showcase to, to show that Merseyside is together in these things and that gun crime and knife crime just shouldn't be accepted and we all need to put these things down. 100%. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And, you know, I, I remember when, I'm going to forget the kid's name as, as I'm caught on the hop, the, the young lad, Evertonian boy, yeah. that, was, that, was, that was caught in crossfire of a, of, of a gun yeah. um, a, a few years ago. And, again, both... Both stadiums, both sets of fans, and that's the thing. There's there's football rivalry, um, but Everton and Liverpool's football rivalry I, I really love because there's the you have family homes where there'll be a mum and dad, three kids, and they'll be split almost down the middle of blue and red, and yeah. you you don't you don't get that as much. I lived in Manchester, and you'd get City families and United families. You'd very rarely get. Maybe it's changed now that City are really good, but you never really used to get split loyalties within a family base. So yeah, I'm sure they'll all be together there and and, and honouring the life of um that 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 young that young lady um very 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 sad news as you say i wanted to ask quickly about carvalho carvalho to start roms ah uh, right you asked me if i would start him with will clock start him do you think he should start yes i do think he should start because every game he's he's played terry to see right i've been a big big advocate i've said it on my channel i've said it on other channels I honestly think he's the truth. And I know Championship and Premier League, they're, they're two different levels, but I saw his rapport with Mitrovic and I've seen how he gets into half spaces and almost at that last man running. And him and Nunes, I think that partnership eventually, because I don't think Nunes will start tomorrow, by the way. I think Klopp will bring him on, but I think Firmino deservedly will start. But I think Carvalho, he, he's just had an impact in every game he's played. He, the Fulham game, he came on and had like a kind of half volley on his instep. And if he put if he took a bit more pace off of it, I think that goes in the net, nestles in it, and we win that three two. Against the Palace game, he had a half volley the last five to ten minutes that just went wide off the post. United, Salah scores off his rebound. And in the last two games, he scores. And more importantly, the winner in our last game. I think Klopp, Klopp has his favorites. We know this is Liverpool fan, he has his loyalties to certain players, has his favorites. But on merit, Carvalho should start. I would start him, but I know Klopp's thing, because Elliot's been our best midfielder this season. I've had my sometimes doubts of him, but he has been our best midfielder. But the way we're going to set up, you can't play both of them at the moment. Yeah, you can either, either, you can only play either or. And that's why I think Cavalli will just miss out. But he should start for me. He should. Mm. He looks he looks very talented um, and it, a bit of versatility to his play. And I always feel like when you're, in a, when, when you're, when you're an attacker, he's an attacking midfielder, stroke winger. To start your, your Premier League life off with Liverpool, six, five games, two goals, it kind of, it, it, it gets the monkey off your back, as it were. It takes that pressure away. You know, if you're an attacking player and, you, you know, if you'd made 15, 20 appearances, some starting, some from the bench and there's no goals, there's no end product, the pressure starts to build that you've got to go and, uh, you've got to go and deliver. You saw the way, and I'm, they're, they're both superior to him in terms of goal scoring right now. But you saw the relief of Darwin Nunes and Harlan when they when they both got their first goals for the yeah. Liverpool and City respectively, because they know the world's looking. Can you score now? Carvalho is only a five million pound signing, so the pressure on him is, of course, nowhere near as as as, as big as those two. But you want to start off by scoring when you're at Liverpool, when you're at Man United, when you're at when you're at these big clubs that are trying to Man City when you're trying to achieve. No matter how young you are, it's you have to play well and deliver in the, in the in the first instance from the pitch. The reason Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott keep getting games, the reason that Trent stayed in the team, is because yeah. they delivered. They came in and played well. You know, if you don't play well, you you don't keep playing. Because Terry, just just to jump in on that one, this is what I'm saying. Like, I'll speak to a mate, and he's like, 
whenever Cavallo comes on, it's a different pressure starting a game or trying to impact a game. But I said, the only way you will know a play is good, mm. the level you think is, is by starting him in a game. Because he's right, bar Bournemouth, every situation Carvalho had to come on against, we were actually chasing the game, whether it was whether trying to win the game or come back in the in the United instance. But I've always said, cool, a lot of fans have him as this impact player because that's only what we've seen. If you start him, let's say he starts and he scores, fans will then be saying, you know what, he's actually a star. Now, you only know by trying, trying and error, but I, I, I'm 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 dying for him to start again. Tell you, it, nothing will make me proud if I see his name on the team sheet tomorrow. I don't think I will, but I'm I'm dying for Cavalier to start. I think I think as well, just to chip in, obviously, you know, scoring a last minute winner in any Premier League game for yeah. such a young, talented player is going to have a massive boost of confidence. So, you know, for 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 Liverpool and for Klopp's sake, for example, putting someone on the pitch that actually is full of confidence, is prepared to drive forward, has got a goal in him very clearly, um, could also be dangerous. So it's not just his age and that he's talented, but actually. He's, he's built this confidence up himself. So it doesn't matter whether you're 35 years old and you score a last-minute winner in the Premier League. If you've got that confidence, maybe they should be in the team. Obviously, mm-hmm. ideally, I probably don't want him to start because from, from somebody looking inwards, he looks like a very talented young man. He looks like he's yeah. level-headed as well. Um, he looks like he's got real ability to not just shoot, but to pick a pass. He's got a range of pass. He's got a little bit of tenacity as well. He's a player that could cause Everton problems tomorrow. So as long as he's not on the pitch, I feel fantastic. <laughs> and also another player you mentioned, sorry to chip in, is Firmino, a player that I have been the first one to criticise for seasons now. I've never known a striker be more of a midfielder than Firmino, but this season he's found something. He's got back to to the Firmino of old. He's scoring goals. He's linking play up again and. And as there we go, and as we can see, we've got we've got some we've got some danger. So so for me again, for Mino, I'd rather Nunes start weirdly because I think we could yeah. get in his head a lot more than we can get in for Mino's, who is also and, on form. And like you alluded to earlier, Firmino is more accustomed to the Merseyside derby, etc. Nunes, like you said, it, it'll be his first one. I, I read a funny tweet. Some fans said if Nunes starts again, he'll get sent off again because it'll be so high up to and like his first most bad derby. They annoy him. He won't. He won't know what to do. So I, I see where you're coming from, but um, Firmino will probably start. I don't think Klopp will chuck Nunes straight back in there. He yeah. could do that. Right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if he. Will. I, I think you're right. I think you saw the way he was swearing after the goal against Newcastle. There, and I'm not <laughs> a bad thing. There's just there is a, um. There, there, he's got that Cantona gene, that young Wayne Rooney gene. That, but equally, you take that away from him, and I think you're looking at a uh, a much worse player. You're looking at a much worse player. I think people like him need it. I always thought the worst thing Wayne Rooney did was get married, have kids, and calm down too young. I think it took away from his game. But there we go. Yeah. Um, boys, score predictions. I go to the waiting first. Roms, what's the score gonna be? Two 0 Liverpool. You know, bold, pre- bold prediction. Uh, my score. Oh, do you want me to give more detail? I think yeah, we score yeah. either, either. I think we score goal in either half. It'll be KG first. Um, 20, 30 minutes. We score just before half time, and then I think we score with ten minutes left to go. But two 0 Liverpool. What are you saying, Mike? Two one Everton. <laughs> we score first, then they counter, and then with fifteen minutes to go, Everton make it two one with a cheeky little ball over the top to Anthony Gordon. There we go. I'm going to go over a nice little 2-2. My little prediction, I'm going 2-2 tomorrow. Everton. <laughs> Everton, 88th minute equaliser. I don't know why I'm saying 88th minute instead of 90th minute, but lo- very close to the end, Everton will get an equaliser. You'd love that, play. Terry, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would. Um, I want Liverpool out of the title race as soon as possible. My team ain't in the title race, but I want Liverpool out of it because you're closing in on matching Man United's total league titles. Um, and there we go. Uh, boys, really appreciate you both coming on uh, on the 12th man today. Viewers, please leave us your comments below. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe and hit the bell notification button. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.